Does Facebook use audio obtained from mobile devices to enrich personal information about its users? Well, Senator, let, let me be let me be clear on this. People I mean, who so you're, you're talking about this conspiracy theory that they have a conversation about it. No, your phone probably isn't listening to you at all times. And I think I can prove it. But big tech is absolutely tracking you and nearly everything you do. It's just probably not in the ways you think they are. And honestly, it's probably much more invasive than you even realize. Hi there, my name is Connor. I'm a software engineer. I've worked at companies like Facebook and I've helped thousands of people learn computer science. Today, I want to focus on something a little bit different. I want to talk about how exactly this tracking technology actually works and what you need to be doing to protect yourself. But first, I want to test the prevailing theory of our phones and if they're listening to us and using that information to target us with ads. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I've got this computer here and it's going to be playing a podcast about scuba diving. And I want to see if it's going to, after this podcast finishes, give me ads about scuba diving on my phone. So I'm going to put my phone right here. We're going to start this podcast and it is going to be playing scuba diving talk for the next hour or so, and then we'll come back to it. Now, oftentimes the best way to actually understand a system is to try to work backwards. So first, what is the goal of these tech companies? And second, what data do they need to achieve those goals? And third, what options do they actually have to gather that data? Well, the goal is simple. It's to make money, to profit. But even that has more complexity to it because ultimately the profit is going to be a product of two things. How many users you have multiplied by how much you can profit per user. Now, if you're selling a product, especially a digital product, this is usually going to be fairly static. You'll make the same amount of money per user. However, the number of users you have can change. So the goal becomes how to acquire as many users as possible. But with an advertising business, the number of users and the value per user can change. So if your ads are more targeted, then those ads are likely to convert better and you get more value per user. But if you have a bad user experience, say from too many ads, you can actually lose users, which results in less profit. And for consumers, this is a good thing because it means that companies are incentivized to not ruin their user experience with advertising because they would lose all of their users. And this is where we get to the sweet spot of targeted ads. If ads are more relevant to the user, then those ads are more likely to convert to sales and thus tech companies can charge more for those advertising spots. But not only that, research has shown that consumers actually prefer targeted ads. And this should make sense just logically. For example, would you rather see an ad that's completely irrelevant to you or an ad that's actually targeted and interesting to you? For most people, they prefer personalization. And this is good because it means targeted ads, if done ethically, can actually result in a better experience for consumers while also increasing profit for the corporations. So now what data are these companies even after? And the answer is almost anything. Where you live, who you know, who you follow, where you work, what things you like and don't like, what you search for, what apps you use, your gender, your ethnic background, all of these data points and thousands of others can be used together to create a wildly accurate prediction for what ads you are most likely to click on. And where they get this data from is oftentimes pretty straightforward because you give it to them. For example, on a social network, you give them a literal list of the things you like and the people you know. And not only that, they can use that data, such as the people you know, to figure out more things you like, because ultimately, if a lot of your friends like the same thing, you probably also are into that thing. And the other data they collect might be a little bit more implicit, but ultimately, you're still giving it to them by using their websites and apps. For example, if you're scrolling through some feed, even if you don't directly interact with anything, so you don't leave any comments or likes or shares, anything like that, if you just scroll, naturally, you're going to slow your scroll at certain points. And when you slow down your scroll, that is an indication that some post that just came on your feed was actually interesting to you. So they can use that as an indication of what you do and don't like. When you visit websites, you've probably seen the pop-ups requesting to share your location. And if you're anything like me, you probably say no most of the time. But even this doesn't matter. They still know where you are. Sure, if you say yes, they will probably get more precise data because this gives them access to the usually more precise geolocation API. But it doesn't even matter if you say no, they still know where you are. 
and they can do this by just using your IP address which is sent with every request on the internet. Using just an IP address, you can get a rough estimate of where in the world somebody is. And also, this IP address is shared across your Wi-Fi, so they can connect your device with any other devices on your Wi-Fi network. And usually, the people on the same Wi-Fi network are likely people who know each other, who live together, and are thus interested in similar things. And then there's the other data they collect. And this revolves around what I think is best described as the most necessary evil on the internet, cookies. Most people have heard of cookies before, but for whatever reason, they're described incorrectly all the time online. But a cookie is actually very simple. Cookies are simply little bits of text that are stored in your browser, and they are put there by websites you visit. So any website you visit can store a cookie, and this cookie is then automatically sent back to that website server the next time you visit the website. And this is important for a lot of things. It is necessary for the internet to work. For example, if you're building up some Amazon cart, to be able to actually store that persistent data of what's in your cart, they likely are going to use something like cookies. Another example is if you are signed into a website. You don't want to have to re-sign in every time you navigate to a new page or when you come back. So for this, they use a cookie to keep track of who is signed in. But cookies have what I would best describe as a dark side. Because big tech corporations have found a way to abuse the very simple cookie system to track nearly everything that you ever do online. You see, I lied to you just a little bit. Cookies aren't only settable by the website you're on. They're settable by any website whose code is currently running on the website you're on. And on the modern web, code is coming from all over the place, not just the website you're actually visiting. This comes in the form of ads, in social sharing buttons, embedded videos, and so much more. Think about all of the different sort of widgets all over the internet. Most of them come from different places. Those different places are third parties, and thus they can set what we call third party cookies. And how does big tech abuse this? Well, they found ways to embed their code on nearly every website you ever visit. And the result of this is that they can set cookies from nearly any website ever. And because of this, they can store lots of information about your browsing history. And when you come back to their website, they have tons of extra information about you. They can use that information to target you with better ads. And oftentimes I hear people talk about strategies like, oh, just don't have an account on that website. But even that doesn't matter because even if you don't have an account on a certain website, it's pretty likely that they have an account for you. You see, we're all just a little bit different from each other. And this is true for how we browse the internet too. For example, I am currently using Firefox version 117.0.1 on macOS 13.3.1 on a 4K monitor in the Pacific time zone in English. And this data and a bunch of other data that they can just collect from your browser when you visit a website is enough for them to uniquely identify you using something known as fingerprinting. With fingerprinting, companies are able to uniquely identify traffic from basically anyone because almost everybody browses the internet in a unique way. You can actually see if you are unique by going to a website like amiunique.org, which will tell you if your fingerprint is unique which it probably is, meaning that you can actually be tracked using fingerprinting. But of course, our fingerprints are constantly changing, as well as many of us have multiple. For example, sometimes I install a new extension, which changes my fingerprint, or sometimes I browse from my iPhone, which has a completely different fingerprint. But even this doesn't really matter because of something known as cross-device tracking. You see, these companies are also very good at figuring out which devices belong to the same people from things like IP addresses and just your browsing habits. They can use this to then collect which devices are which and still figure out that it's the same person. Okay, so it's been about an hour and the podcast is over. So I'm going to scroll through some apps and websites on my phone to see if we get any ads for scuba diving, my new favorite activity, because I want to spend money on scuba diving. So I'll be scrolling for a little bit and I'll let you know if anything interesting comes up. No. Okay, so let's try to think about this logically. Would it even make sense for these companies to be listening to our phones? And I would argue probably not because of how much data we actually give them. There's also just technical constraints. For one, our phones have a limited amount of battery and listening to the microphone all day long and uploading that to their servers would use a lot of our batteries and it would drain the batteries. We also have limited data. 
So whenever we're not on a Wi-Fi network, we'd be using up our cellular plans to upload these microphone recordings to these tech companies. And also from an app developer perspective, it's essentially impossible. iOS and Android don't give you access to just use the microphone at all times. So if a company was actually doing this, it would mean that either they are colluding with the operating system companies or they found some crazy exploit that rather than reporting it like they should, they've decided to completely abuse and they've managed to do so while staying under the radar of the companies that make the operating systems. They'd also need to make sense of the fact that probably 99%, if not even more of that microphone data would be completely useless, whether it be because the phone is in your pocket or too far away to have any intelligible data, or just that the conversations it heard were about nothing of any meaning and weren't actually useful for targeting ads. All this to say, are tech companies tracking you? Absolutely. Are they using your microphone to track you? Probably not. And I know we all have these stories of, I was just talking about a thing and then I got ads for it. But there are logical explanations for how this actually happens. For one, you might have actually searched for it or just implicitly shown that you were interested in it by slowing down your scroll or something like that. There also could have been other people in your household or friends that are somehow associated with you that were searching for it or showed their interest in it. Or it could just be a topic that's somehow adjacent to other topics they know you are interested in. For example, as a software engineer and a tech bro, you saw I got some ads for Allbirds. Why did I get those ads? Because it seems like every tech bro in Silicon Valley wears Allbirds. But by far the most likely scenario is simply pure chance. You see thousands of ads per day, but you don't register all of the irrelevant ones. Why is this? Because they are irrelevant. But of course you do notice the ads that feel like they're too targeted towards you. So when you notice one out of a thousand, all you're thinking about is how did they manage to target this one ad? So ultimately, if you want to protect yourself online, it's not about covering up your microphone and things like this. Sure, if you want to, you can use a privacy focused browser like Brave, which is going to mostly prevent fingerprinting by essentially just lying to the websites about who you are. But even then, I would ask the question, why? For me personally, I prefer having targeted ads and I think it just gives me a better user experience online. And I honestly just don't care very much if tech companies know how boring my life is and what some of my interests are. For me personally, I find it much more important to just focus on minimizing how much of my personally identifiable information is online. So things like phone numbers, email addresses, my actual physical address, things like my social security number, all of those types of things, I try to minimize how much I give them out online. But as far as information about whether or not I like scuba diving, I don't think it's that important. And on occasion, I do do a bit of a personal audit. So I go through all of my accounts, delete the ones I don't need, update all of the passwords for the ones I do want to keep, as well as remove permissions from things like my Google permissions for apps that I'm no longer using anymore. But of course, the most important thing is just to stay informed and to understand your own privacy tolerance and to make decisions based on that tolerance and then to watch this video next that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy.